we felt it important about eight weeks ago just to start a series on vision, the vision of the rock. And, uh, and today is the conclusion of that series. So I'm going to back up and just hit a few highlights that have taken place throughout the past few weeks and then, um, and then wrap it up today. And then next week, Pastor Bob will be here to share with us. And guess what? Right now he's in Haiti. He's dedicating a church this morning, right now, that we helped to build. Come on. So we're staying on mission. The mission of God doesn't take a day off uh, for COVID or political unrest or anything. The mission of God shines even brighter when the darkness gets darker. Amen. So we're staying on mission. We're staying on what God has called us to do and be as a church. And so to give you a brief foundation of what is happening here at The Rock and what it means to be somebody who attends The Rock and the values that we cling to and that we live and we make a priority in our lives. I know that many of you who've attended here before have noticed our values on the wall out in the lobby, but for those of you who are new, when you leave, if you didn't notice them, you will see identity, community, and mission. And that's what we've been talking about over the past eight weeks. I'm having trouble hearing you. Siri just popped on. <laughs> she said, sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you, so I'll speak louder in case... <laughs> But we have been uh, speaking about identity, community, and mission, and that is the heartbeat of our church, a vision that found its genesis in other influences that came through Pastor Brandon and the leadership here at The Rock and became something that is the bedrock and the foundation of what we believe and how we live, identity being that thing that we initially get in our relationship with God, that we were created in his image, and we are sons and daughters of the Most High God, that we were created to live and walk in his image. In Ephesians, it says that we maintain, we're eager to maintain the unity of the faith so that we might come to a true knowledge of the Son of God and the full measure of the stature of Christ. That's a powerful statement that we would stand as Christ stands, that when we enter a room, the kingdom of God arrives. That is the call on our lives. But just that identity in, in our fellowship with God, the, the, the revelation of who we are called to be and the affection that we share with our heavenly father being adopted into his kingdom is not enough. We need to take that revelation into community where it becomes processed and massaged and has, uh, finds greater understanding there. And we mature in the revelation that God has given us. Hey, I know it's easy for me to mistake revelation for transformation. It's easy for me to do that. Because the revelation of God is so amazing, so refreshing, so delightful, so exhilarating. And it can be so fulfilling that that's where we stop. But like our God, there's always more, amen? And so the more is in community where we get together and we fellowship with each other and we see the word of God uh, transform each other's lives by sharing our revelation with each other. And this is uh, my favorite verse. I know I quote it all the time, but it merits repetition. May the fellowship of your faith be effective through the true knowledge of every good thing that is in you for Christ's sake. See, that's a powerful scripture that defines us. Then together, in community, loving God, together we find a mission. And then, so identity, community, and together as a family, we go on mission. Sure, there's opportunities for us to reach out to people in our social sphere, but we always want to bring them into our kingdom family where they can experience the life of God in the hearts and minds of other people. 
Like anything else, this truth, identity, community, and mission, can be amorphous and seemingly feckless if it is not applied. This is something that we have to intentionally live in order to feel the full weight of God's glory and blessing on our lives. And this vision is for every individual in this house and every family. This doesn't make a distinction, oh, only married couples can really fall into that. No, youth down to the smallest child and, and adults to the oldest and families and single people all can participate in this vision and the blessing that it has to offer. But another thing that came out through this whole series is that all three of these groups are inexorably linked. You, you can't separate one from the other. If you feel like, man, my worship's really strong and I'm connecting with God and my identity is being downloaded to me, if I don't hear that and translate that into doing, who, who is the man who builds his house on the rock? It's the one who hears and does. Yeah. So we go into community. We find that where our revelation finds a home, it finds a place to begin to be processed. Dr. John Harris said, those who have a deep sense of identity have a deep sense about their calling to the mission. He also said something similar about community. Those who have a deep sense of identity will be engaged in community. So there is a connection there. All three work together. And that is the kingdom's plan. When our identity is lost so is our community and our mission. It is the kingdom, it is kingdom for God's will to play out on earth as it is in heaven. God lives in community. God lives on mission. God lives in purpose. And we see that God's will according to the Lord's prayer Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this is really important. Earth, according to the kingdom, is supposed to be an exact copy as much as possible of heaven. There are trees in heaven. There are trees in earth. There's no other place in the universe where you can say that to be true. There are streets in heaven. There are streets on earth. The kingdom of God is in heaven. And the list goes on and on. We are to be a copy. Our hearts are to burgeon with the glory of God and be made manifest in this earth. It's a powerful and humbling responsibility. And we see this happen throughout even the physical, the way the physical realm makes itself manifest into the spiritual realm, we see a pattern playing out consistently. There is a consistent pattern with the natural and then the spiritual. And what came to me, and I shared this in a previous uh, message that I called the chemistry of community, but this is really important to me. It's a new revelation, and I was in sharing, getting ready to share, God had given me the name, the chemistry of community, but I had no idea what that meant. And one morning at about 3 a.m., God woke me up and asked, told me, read the definition of chemistry. And so I did. And I'm going to show you identity, community, and mission in this definition. And this is key to me personally because it shows the pattern of the natural and the spiritual and how things work consistently together toward the kingdom. Chemistry is the branch of science that deals with the identification of substances. There's identity. Of the matter, uh, of which matter is composed, the investigation of their properties, still identity, and ways in which they interact, combine, and change community. 
and the use of these processes, mission. To form new substances. 2,300 years ago, Aristotle said, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Together, we glorify God. Together, we are so much more than we are individually. Together, we glorify God in a way that is so beautiful. And that's why from stem to stern, we see in the word of God that God calls us to unity. This last week, my wife and I were able to go on a vacation. We've had several canceled, but we finally got to go (laughs) due to all the craziness. And so we went to Colorado, where my wife is from, and uh, we love to travel in the fall. And we went through uh, the Rocky Mountain National Forest, and we just saw the fall colors, and we love aspen trees, and there's a few sprays of them, uh, or stands, if you want to be technical, up near South Shore Tahoe out in Hope Valley. How many of you have ever been out to Hope Valley? All right, you got to go. It's stunning. Anyway... We were there, and we went to this place called Crested Butte, and we stayed there for a night, and there was this pass called Kebler Pass, and you had never been through that before, had you, hon? So I, and I had obviously neither, but my wife is from there, so we just said, let's do this as our vacation and see some family while we're there. Well, the morning we got up in Crested Butte, we decided to drive through Kebler Pass, which the locals get really upset if you call it Keebler Pass. I'm just going to let you know that. (laughs) It was a thing. (laughs) Anyway, we started to drive through Kebler Pass, and I would venture to say that there are probably more aspen trees in Kebler Pass than there are in the whole state of California. And as we drove through that pass, everything was turning. There were some still green. There were the yellows, the golds, the reds, because aspens do this thing where they hit every hue of the spectrum. And it it's, was just incredible. And while we were there, I was thinking, and I'm not segueing to something else. I want to make a point here. I was thinking to myself as I drove through that pass, this is like the blessing of God. It is everywhere, wall-to-wall trees everywhere. And aspens are amazing things because if you see one stand of aspens, that's one organism. The largest organism in the world is a stand of aspen trees. And they're all connected together. They're individual trees, yet they're all connected together. They're all one living organism. We are all individuals, but we have one faith, one baptism, one Holy Spirit. We're all united together. And this was something obvious, and I realized just this morning, this is for you. The blessing of God is found in community. The richness of my life is my kingdom family. Now, everyone is a blessing to everyone in the body of Christ in some way or another, and I don't want to downplay that value, but our communities here at The Rock are set up not to be an eight to ten week book study. They're set up as Acts chapter two communities where the kingdom of God is building a kingdom family, where we come together, we meet together consistently. And as far as anyone's concerned, it's from now until Jesus comes back. We're building families with spiritual grandmothers and grandfathers, spiritual aunts and uncles, spiritual brothers and sisters that we connect with on a regular basis. That's kingdom family. Our goal is to move past the casual acquaintance and find a family outside these four walls. That's the goal and the purpose. So I wanted to take a minute 
and define what community is here at The Rock. And we use the Word of God. That's a good thing, isn't it? Use the Word of God to define what community is. And we call them Acts 2 communities. So in Acts chapter 2, we find the definition. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So let's stop right there, and I will communicate key ingredients to kingdom family, kingdom community. Number one is it has the word. Look, the word of God is important. It is so important. You know, the Bible says that the good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth that which is good. That out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And I've said this before, but I believe it is so important. When God speaks out of the abundance of his heart, his word is made manifest in our lives. The word of God is the treasure of God's heart. And when we fellowship around the word, his fellowship becomes effective through the knowledge of him. He joins in our fellowship when we invite the word and his Holy Spirit into our fellowship. It's powerful. The word of God is powerful. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. We've talked about that. And to the breaking of bread and prayer. So then we think that eating together is key to fellowship. Now that might sound carnal to some of you. But it's biblical. One of my wife and I, one of our favorite shows to watch is Somebody Feed Phil. Has, has anybody seen that? Uh, isn't that the best show? Okay, so now you've all got something that is kosher, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Phil was one of the producers and writers of the TV show, Everybody Loves Raymond. And so he travels all over the world experiencing cuisine from all over the world. But this guy, whatever, who, who was the guy that was real, Bourdain? He is like the antithesis of Anthony Bourdain. He is on the other end of the spectrum, full of joy. He's a Jewish guy. You'd swear he was a Christian. He's full of joy. He loves on people wherever he goes. And he goes to these high-end restaurants. He not only eats with the restaurant owners and experiences the food and everything he eats is the best thing he's ever had in his life, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, but here's what's key. At the end of every episode, he gathers all of the people that he's been with throughout that episode for a big feast in someone's home. And he sits them all around the table and even if there's kids there, he's playing with the kids and messing around with them. And it's like this big family environment. And he said in one episode, food is the great unifier. There is something about getting together and sharing a meal that is powerful. So we do that in our Acts 2 communities. Then here's what happens. They have favor with all the people. Community is magnetic. When it happens the way God designed it, people are attracted to it like a moth to the flame. And that's how I got saved. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who are being saved. So through this process, you see identity, community, and mission all playing out in this process, that's what an Acts 2 community is. Sean Patterson said, the less you need community, the less you are like God. Don't fall into that deception. Look, this is an invitation to all of us to engage in the glory of God, to engage and be drowned in the blessing of God by being immersed into community. It's a beautiful thing. And then the last thing that we have is mission. And I think it's just amazing that this morning, Pastor Bob is dedicating a church in Haiti that our church 
help to build. Matter of fact, let's just pray for him right now. Let's pray for him right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we lift up Pastor Bob, Lord, and I just pray for a spirit of faith on him, God, that when he speaks your word, when he prays your word in faith over that church, God, that first of all, there would be a, a safety there in that house, God, because of the unrest in Haiti, Lord. We just come against the enemy and the evil forces that uh, would attempt to tear that down, God. We stand in faith with them. And Father, we pray for a special anointing on Pastor Bob to bless that congregation in faith, to bless the leadership and the families that are there, Lord, and to dedicate that house to your glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Let's all say amen. Amen. So Pastor Bob is there, and we've seen the fruit come from his influence in Haiti. Well, Pastor Bob's quote is, it's getting involved in what God is doing when and where and how God wants it done. It's not in our time frame. It's in God's. He's first. He's the priority his plans and purposes, his calling on our life, that comes first. Lord, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to live? Everything else is second. The call of God on our lives is first. There is no convenience clause in our salvation contract with God. As a matter of fact, our faith should move past inconvenience to complete and total sacrifice. That's what we're called to do, to take up our cross. John Harris said, Dr. John Harris, sorry, John, Dr. John. <laughs> we have an addiction to the comfort zone. You know, there's nothing about the gospel that calls us to be safe. It calls us to lay down our lives. You might say, well, Mark, you're being pretty forceful. Well, I think the truth is. I think the truth is what it is. And how we respond to the truth, how we respond to God's word is what makes it either comfortable or uncomfortable. I think about Kebler Pass and driving through there and seeing all of those aspen trees and the Lord speaking to my heart, liking it, likening it to the blessing of the Lord. That's what our invitation is today. To be a part of something that is much bigger than ourselves. To be a part of something that glorifies God resoundingly in a way that we could never do on our own. To be a part of kingdom family and the blessing of the Lord, walking into kingdom family and being blessed by that. That's what this invitation is about today. Is there sacrifice along the way? Well, sure there is. But that's the glory of the kingdom. The more we lay down our lives, the more we decrease, the more he increases. Isn't that what we want? That's what we want. Together, we display the glory of God and the glory of his invitation into that. So I want to thank you so much, everyone for coming this morning. All of our new people, we just had so many this morning coming in, Brandon. There's just so many new people. We just bless you so much and thank you for joining us today. I want to pray a blessing over you before we leave. That God, and I'm hesitant to say this, But I feel compelled to say it. Are you sure you really want me to say that? <laughs> we 
we can, we can, we can go to church on a regular basis and be alone. You, you, you're not meant to be alone. You're not meant to be by yourself. Your, the purpose of God for your life does not include a casual acquaintance on Sunday morning. The purpose of God for your life is to live in a kingdom family. Make a decision out there listening to me. Make a decision to draw outside of the fringe into the deep heart of kingdom family in the body of Christ. That's key. Father, we thank you that as we come into community, Lord, as we choose to engage your word, your will, your plan, your purpose for the kingdom, Father, that the deeper we draw into kingdom family, Father, the deeper we draw into your blessing and your activity. God, we love you so much, God. We thank you that this is so simple, God, to understand. So simple to engage, Lord. So simple to embrace. Father, we thank you that making access to your glory and your kingdom is so simple to where everybody can get it. Father, we commit our hearts to move deeper into the center of your will by moving our lives deeper into community, flourishing in our identity and engaging the mission that you have for us. So we bless you, Heavenly Father. As your sons and daughters, God, we stand here as the righteousness of God without a sense of guilt or condemnation, God. We know we have free access to your presence, God, by the blood of Jesus. It is the sacrifice of your son on the cross, Lord, that has made that possible. And as we model that, Lord, and sacrifice our lives to you, Lord, we move deeper into your kingdom. Father, may you increase and we decrease. In Jesus' name, let's all say amen together. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for showing up this morning. Be blessed, everybody.